Hey there, it's Izzy here. In this video, I'm gonna show you how to create an animated bar graph like this one, and we're gonna use Motion 5 to do it. And of course, this type of thing is something that's pretty popular in videos where you need to show numbers or statistics or something like that, and there's an accompanying chart. Well, you could just put a static photo up on the screen or a static bar chart, but it's more interesting if you can animate it and add some visual interest to it that way. So we're gonna do this in Motion 5. It's pretty easy to do. Let's get started. We'll begin in the project browser. I'm gonna create a new motion project. For the preset, I'll choose Broadcast HD 720 uh, to keep it as a fairly low resolution. For the frame rate, I'll choose 29.97 because that's a common one here in the United States of America. For the duration, I'm gonna choose seven seconds and I'll click Open to create my new project. There are two things I like to do from a housekeeping standpoint right off the bat with every single motion project. And that, that is, I like to change the zoom pop-up menu to fit so I can see my entire canvas all at once. And then I like to save my project right away. So I'm gonna choose save as, I'll give it the name bar graph, which I already have there and I'll click save and replace my previous one. And now I'm ready to get started. Let's start by choosing our rectangle tool, which is this little button right here. I'll just click on it once to select it. And if you don't see this HUD here, this floating window called the HUD, which gives you quick access to several of the different parameters that you can adjust for each tool. If you don't see it, then all you have to do is click on this little button right here. This displays or hides the HUD. And uh, while I've got the HUD open, I'm gonna choose the color well and choose a dark blue color here and then close down my color window. Now I'm ready to draw my shape. I'll click and drag and just create a big old rectangle here in the middle of my canvas. We'll use this as the background. Now you'll notice that when you're done using the rectangle tool, it doesn't switch to another tool. So you could see I could create another shape now if I wanted to. If I were to click and drag, I'd create another shape. I'm not gonna do that right now. I actually do wanna switch away to the select transform tool. So I'll click on it. I'll click on my group name right here. In fact, I'll double click on it to give it a new name. I'm gonna call it BG for background. This is gonna be the background for our bar chart. And then I'll move my HUD out of the way here. And with this group selected, I'll click the plus sign to create another group. This group, I'm gonna call it bars. I'll just double click on it to give it a new name, type bars. This is where we're gonna put the bars on the bar graph. And to do that, let's go back to our rectangle tool. I'm just gonna click it once to select it, choose a different color. Uh, in fact, I'm gonna choose this light blue. Now I have a color scheme here that I've put together ahead of time. It's a good idea to create a color scheme for something like this so you could just quickly get to the colors. I'm gonna choose this light blue and I'll close down my color window. My rectangle tool is selected, so I'll just draw my first rectangle. And in fact, I'll just draw it right here like this, and then I'll let go. Now, if I wanted to, I could keep drawing more rectangles, but because I want them to be the same width and the same height for now, what I'm gonna do instead is just duplicate the rectangle that I already have. This will speed up my workflow. There's several different ways to duplicate it. Here's a fast way. I'll choose the Select Transform tool, and then I'll hold down Option on the keyboard and just click and drag. And just like in a lot of different applications, when you Option, click, and drag, you create a copy. In fact, I'll do it again. Option, click, and drag, and I'll create a copy, and then Option, click, and drag, and I'll create a copy. And you can see that I have four different bars here that are the same height and width, but the spacing between them isn't even, and I'm not even 100% sure that the bottoms are even, so that's what we're gonna do next. I'm gonna shift click here in the layers list to select all four of my bars. I'll go up to the object menu, go down to alignment, and I'll choose align bottom edges. Now, it looks like they're already aligned, but there might be just small differences between them, so it's always a good idea to choose this just to make sure everything is aligned. I didn't see any changes, so it looks like it is okay. All right, let's go to object again, go to alignment, and I'm gonna choose distribute horizontal centers. Now what that means is, if you look at the screen horizontally, it's going to distribute the centers of my different shapes so that they're perfectly distributed horizontally, okay? So I'll just select that, and you can see now there's a nice even spacing between all of them. In fact, if I needed to change anything, it would be the background. There's too much space on this side compared to this side, so I'll go ahead and select my, my background rectangle shape, and I'll just click to drag to bring this in a little bit right here. Okay, very good. I can also center this background. In fact, let me go ahead and do that. I'll just center it using the dynamic guides that appear automatically, and then I'll select all four of my bars and move them so that they're centered there too. Now, I'm gonna click to select just the first bar here, and you can see the color is already good, so I'm gonna leave that where it is. Now I'm gonna change the color of the second one, so I'll click on the second rectangle to select it. You can see it's selected here, and it's also selected in the canvas. I'm gonna change the fill color. In fact, I'll change it to this kinda, what is that, sort of like a pink color there, and then I'll close this down, 
Select the next rectangle and change the color there as well. And you can see this is a nice color scheme, these sort of lighter pastel colors that all go together very nicely. And I'll select this one to change it as well. From a composition standpoint, I like the way that this is looking. But from a timing standpoint, nothing changes right now. If I move the playhead through my composition, you can see that there's no animation, no changes. It's all just a static design. And when you're creating a composition like this, it's a good idea to get everything arranged first in the canvas, then add the animations next. So that's what we'll do. Let's start by making the different rectangles appear at different times. So I'll select my first rectangle. And of course, the timeline, you can work with the same layers in the timeline as you're working with up here in the layers list. So if I wanna select this first rectangle, I could click here to select it, or I could also just click here to select it. It's the same thing. I'm fine with this appearing at the very beginning of the project, so I'm just gonna leave that where it is. Now I'll go to my next rectangle, which is this one right here, and I want this to start a second in. So one way I can do that is I can double click in my timing pane, choose one, period or I hit plus one period and then return on the keyboard and that moves the playhead forward exactly one second. And with the playhead right there and with this rectangle selected, if I hit I on the keyboard, that creates an endpoint. So that layer now doesn't start. It doesn't appear in the project until one second into the project from a timing standpoint. So let's do that for the next one now. I'm going to go ahead and select the next rectangle which is this one right here. I'll move forward again one second, so plus one period. The period incidentally stands for zero, zero, which is zero, zero frames, so it's one second and zero, zero frames that I'm moving forward. And I'll hit I on the keyboard once again, and then we'll do it one more time where I go to the final one and hit plus one period, and then hit I on the keyboard, and you can see the stair stepping happens to where at the very beginning of the project, the first rectangle is there, and then one second in, the second rectangle appears, and then the next second, the third one does, and then the fourth second, or I guess that's the third second, then the fourth rectangle appears. So if I play through it, this is what it looks like. It's a very simple, basic animation, as you can see, and that's good enough to get us started. Of course, we have plenty more left to do. Now I wanna animate this first rectangle to have it appear, to have it grow onto the chart. To animate that, there's several different ways you can do it to get a similar type of effect. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna animate the cropping of it. And this is kind of a, a reverse way of thinking, but I think it's very effective. To get the HUD out of the way, I'm gonna go ahead and close it. I'm not gonna use the HUD for this next part. I'll click on the inspector. I'll choose my first rectangle right here in the layers list so that it's selected and I'm looking at the inspector for that specific shape. I'll go to the properties inspector and I'll go down to crop and I'm gonna enable cropping click show, scroll down so that I can see all the different parameters that have to do with the cropping. And the one that I want to adjust is the top. Watch what happens to this shape as I adjust the top. You see that? So this is a way where you can make it grow. If I animate this parameter, I can make this grow. Now, one issue we have is that if I move the slider all the way to the very right, it's not far enough. You can see that shape is still halfway there. What I need to do is instead click on the value itself, click and drag to the right, and you can see I can make that value get even higher so that I'm not, I'm not limited to just cropping away 200 pixels. I can go all the way to 500 pixels and make that thing disappear completely. Okay, so it looks like about 505 pixels is what I need at the very beginning to make it fully cropped out. Okay, so now let's set a keyframe right here and let's move forward one second in our timeline. So I'm gonna do plus one period again. And now on that one second mark with this number in red, because I already set a previous keyframe. Uh, take a look at this here. If I scroll down, you can see that there's a keyframe there on the very first frame of our project. That's what that diamond is. And if you don't see that, just make sure you can see keyframes here. You can click on this button and that'll show it. Now, one keyframe doesn't create an animation. You need at least two different keyframes with two different values. So here at this point, I don't need to create another keyframe because you'll notice this parameter, this value is already red, which means that if I make any changes, motion will automatically create another keyframe here on this specific frame, which is exactly what I want. So instead of being fully cropped away, what I wanna do now is have this grow. So I'll click and drag to the left to let it to to let it grow some. Now I don't need to grow all the way to the top. Maybe I'll maybe I'll do something like this. So I'll have it grow to be this tall. You can see that there's a second keyframe now. If I move the playhead to the beginning and hit play or the space bar, you can see that that animates the growth of that. Let's do the same thing for our second rectangle now. I'm going to select it in the timeline. I'll hit shift i on the keyboard. This is a great 
great keyboard shortcut to memorize, Shift I. What it does is it moves the playhead to the end point of any layer. So it doesn't matter where my playhead is. If I have my playhead all the way over here, but I have this layer selected, if I hit Shift I on the keyboard, then you'll see that the playhead automatically goes to the end point of that layer. Super handy sh keyboard shortcut to memorize. Once again, I'll enable cropping and I'll scroll down. I'm going to set a keyframe on this frame and I'm going to click and drag until that bar disappears completely. There we go. All right, so about 504 uh, pixels is what I need to work with there. And I'm gonna move forward plus one period move the playhead forward one second. With this layer still selected now, I'm going to adjust this cropping to where it appears. In fact, maybe for this one, I'll make it so it's pretty small, maybe like that. Let's go to our next layer and do the same thing. I'll select this next rectangle, this one right here. Turn on cropping, scroll down in the properties inspector so that I can see my top parameter once again, create a keyframe, and I already know that it's gonna have to be about 504 pixels here to make it disappear. I have it at 511, that's fine. Go forward one more second, so plus one period. And with the playhead right there, I'm going to adjust the cropping. I'll make this one pretty tall. Let's go to maybe right here. And we have to do this all one more time again. On this fourth rectangle right here, I'm going to enable cropping. Scroll down so that I can see my top parameter once again under cropping, set a keyframe, I'm gonna set this, I'm just gonna type in 505 here and that makes it disappear completely. And I'll move forward one more second, plus one period. And then I'm going to adjust this cropping. So, and I'll just click and drag and let's have it be, what should I have it be tall or short? Just for variety's sake, maybe I'll put it right there. And now we're done creating the animations where they appear on. So let me go ahead and move the playhead to the beginning. I'll deselect everything by clicking this open area in the layers list. And I'll hit spacebar space bar on the keyboard to play through it. There we go. Okay, so now we have the animated growth of the charts. This looks pretty good, but we can make it more interesting if we give it a 3D look. So let's go ahead and make this project three-dimensional. The way I'll do that is I'll go to the object menu and choose new camera. If you add a camera, it's gonna ask you to switch to 3D. In this case, I do want to, so I'll switch to 3D. It appears that nothing's really changed, right? But there's some new stuff on the interface. I'm gonna go to the camera menu and choose perspective. You'll notice that I'm no longer zoomed to fit anymore. It's at 100%, so I'm gonna change this to fit. And with the perspective camera chosen, I'm now gonna orbit around by clicking and dragging here so you can see this from the side. Okay, you can see it's flat. Even though I'm working in a 3D space, there's no d three dimension to this yet. It's still just a flat card kind of a look there. All right, so what I'm gonna do is I'm going to just kind of angle it here to the left. I'm gonna choose my bars group. And with that group chosen, I'm gonna grab this little arrow here, this blue one that's pointing out from the side. I'm gonna grab that little blue arrow and just click and drag and I'm gonna move the bars away from the background. So you can see there's a little bit more of a three dimension to it now. They're still very flat, it's two flat layers there, but there's distance between them which adds to the whole three dimensional look. Okay, I'm gonna switch back to my active camera. Let's add some animation to this camera here by adding a sweep behavior. Just select the camera in the layers list, go to the behaviors pop-up menu, choose the camera sub-menu, and there's a behavior under camera called sweep. If you select it, just move the playhead to the beginning and, you'll, and hit play and you'll see what the sweep behavior does. You can see that it kind of, it orbits around there a little bit, okay? That's not the look that I'm going for. So I'm gonna hit space bar, move the playhead to the beginning, make sure that sweep is selected. I'm looking at the behaviors inspector for it. I'm gonna change the start to negative 35 degrees, and I'll change the end to 35 degrees so that it's gonna start negative 35 and then it's gonna pivot around and end at plus 35. So let's see what this looks like. There we go, that looks a lot better. There's more of a dramatic look to it. Okay, so that's looking pretty good, but I still wanna do even more, so I'll hit spacebar to pause my animation. I'm gonna duplicate my sweep behavior by just selecting it here in the layers list and choosing Command-D on the keyboard to duplicate. So Command-D duplicates it. Now I've got two sweeps applied. Well, that's too much. The first sweep was swiveling on the Y-axis. That's why it was tilting around the Y-axis. But if I wanna tilt from top to bottom, I need to change my axis of the sweep, the second one, to tilt, which is X, 
And right now it's way too dramatic there. See, if I start at the beginning, it's looking way down from the top and then going all the way to the bottom. That's too much. So I want it to be a little bit more subtle than that. So I'll choose negative eight for the start and I'll choose positive eight for the end. And now we can see we start high, go down and tilt around and we start low. That's looking pretty good there. Okay. So that's a good start. Now to sell this three-dimensional look, I want to add a light to it so it creates shadows on the background. Right now, there's no shadows, as you can see. Let's add some. Can't have shadows without a light, so let's go ahead and add that. Go up to Object, choose New Light. Right now, it's a little close. I'm going to click and drag on this little arrow here to pull it away. If you can't see that, it doesn't look like an arrow. It looks like just a blue dot, but what that is is an arrow that's pointing towards us. So I'll pull it away, and there's still no shadows. There's definitely light, no shadows. To turn on shadows, we need to first select it here in the inspector. So the, the inspector for the light under the light panel, choose shadows, turn it on, click show, and adjust the softness. Right now, it's a little too hard. And if I go all the way to the right, it's still too hard. So once again, I can just click on the value itself and drag to the right, and you can see that I can adjust the shadow softness. That's looking pretty good. And I'll reduce the opacity so that's a little bit more subtle, maybe like that. I'm going to move the light up so that the shadows kind of point down a little bit. And let's see what happens if I move it to the right a little bit. And let's see what happens if we move it out a little further. Okay, I think I like that a little bit better. Let's, let's kind of scroll through it. Yeah, that's looking pretty good. Okay, so if I hit the space bar, I could make some adjustments to fine tune it, but overall I think that looks pretty good. It's definitely more interesting in a video to have animated charts like this versus just a flat static photo of a chart. As you can see, it's pretty easy to do in Motion 5. Hopefully you found this information helpful. I'll see you in the next video.